The Jack Benny Program. Quality of product is essential to continuing success. <laughs> Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. LSMFT. 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 Of course. That's it. Right you are. In a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. It takes fine tobacco to make a fine cigarette. And year after year, at market after market, independent tobacco experts, auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. No doubt about it. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And fine tobacco means real deep down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. At 50, American. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, it's Sunday. And it's such a beautiful day that Jack and Mary are walking to the studio. Gosh, Mary, isn't this a perfect day for a walk? It sure is. The sun is so warm and bright. I'm glad we're... Jack, what are you doing? I'm rubbing some suntan oil on me. Well, take out the sardines first. It smells terrible. (laughs) Mary. Pull your shirt down. You look silly with a bare midriff. All right, all right. I was just trying to get a little sunshine. You know, sunshine is very... Say, look, Jack. Isn't that Hedy Lamar's nurse coming this way, pushing that baby carriage? Where? Oh, yes. You know, Hetty's baby must be over a year old now. Yeah, and awfully cute. Yeah, here they come. Hello, you cute little thing. Gucci, gucci, gucci. <laughs> gucci, gucci, goo. Jack, leave the nurse alone and pay attention to the baby. <laughs> Huh? Oh, yeah, my glasses are so thick. Say, nurse. Nurse, this is Hetty Lamar's baby, isn't it? Oui, oui, monsieur. C'est un bébé tellement bien élevé. Uh, je n'ai pas nu la mère de la bébé depuis des années. Comment va-t-elle? Oh, elle va très bien, merci. Elle me parle souvent de vous. Excusez-moi, je voudrais un poitant de pommes frites. Quoi? Mary, what did I say? <laughs> You asked her for an order of French fried potatoes. <laughs> oh. oh, I meant to say she was a ripe, a nice tomato. <laughs> oh, Jack. What? That baby is so cute. Yeah. Listen to that. Don't cry, don't cry. Does the itty bitty baby want a great big man to play with you? All right. Now, here's a little game that all babies like. Now, pay attention, baby. This little piggy went to market. This little piggy stayed home. This little piggy had roast beef. And this little piggy had (laughs) nothing. Piggy went, wee, 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 wee. Jack, we've got a long walk yet. Let's get going. Okay. Wait till I put my shoe on. <laughs> yeah. Goodbye, baby. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Au revoir. Je lui dirai que je vous ai vu. J'ai estré que vous ne me trevez pas estupide. Uh, what was that? I canceled the French fried potato. <laughs> Come on, Mary. Well, there's NBC. Yeah, we're a little early, too. Let's stop in the drugstore and get a sandwich. Okay. 
Wait a minute, Mary. Here's the paper. I want to look up the lineups uh, for today's game. Well, what do you want to know? I want to find out who is going to pitch for St. Louis and whom is going to pitch for Boston. <laughs> I've got a feeling whom didn't do, do so good today. <laughs> Come on, Mary. Let's take those two vacant stools on the end. Here, two right here. Oh, yes. A oh, waiter. Waiter. Yes. <laughs> are, are these two stools available? No, they're reserved for Caesar and Cleopatra. <laughs> Drugstore with an MC. Sit down, Mary. Uh, waiter, I'd like a chicken sandwich on white toast. Uh, yes, ma'am. And you? <laughs> well, I don't know. Have you got a menu? Here. <laughs> now, let me see. Don't bend it. It's the only one we have. <laughs> I'm not... And that... stop drooling on it. There's nothing on there that good. Every time I come in here, it's the same thing. Jack, it's your own fault. You antagonize him. I do not. You do, too. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. Give me a cup of coffee and some bread for these sardines. <laughs> Sandwich, will you, waiter? Yes, ma'am. And would you please put some lettuce on it? Yes, ma'am. One chicken sandwich with lettuce. You want the chicken in the middle with the lettuce on top or the lettuce in the middle with the chicken on top? <laughs> hey, Mary, that voice sounds familiar. Waiter, tell the chef to come out here. Yeah, very well. Oh, chef, come out here. A customer wants you. A customer wants me. I know there's a meat shortage, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> Say, aren't you the little hot dog man? Pickle in the middle and the mustard on top. Just the way you like him and they're all I knew it. I knew it. Say, don't you remember me? I bought hot dogs from you last year. Oh, sure. Sure, I recognize the mustard on your lapel. <laughs> Jack, have you had that mustard on your lapel for a whole year? Well, I hated to take it off. It looks like a discharge button. <laughs> but, Mr. Kitzel, I can't understand you working as a chef in a drugstore. What happened to your hot dog stand? Oh, a lick and a lick it is <laughs> My hot dog stand is no longer under my jurisdiction. Well, how'd you lose them? What happened? Well, today I bet on Boston. Hmm. Game must be over. Well, that's a shame. Why didn't you bet on St. Louis? And go against my hometown? Oh, you're from Boston? Well, where do you think I got the accent? <laughs> well, it's nice seeing you again, Mr. Kitzel. Mutual. Mm. Well, let's go, Mary. I, uh... Mary, I want to get in a little early because I asked Edgar Bergen to meet me in the studio. I have a little business I want to talk to him about. Okay. Oh, waiter, I'll take the check. Here you are. That'll be $18.65. <laughs> what? One chicken sandwich can't come to $18.65. I know, but no matter what it is, I'll have to fight for it, so let's make it worthwhile. <laughs> oh, here's 50 cents, and that's plenty. Let's go, Mary. It's the last time I ever come to this drugstore. But, Jack, if it's good enough for Caesar and Cleopatra, it's certainly good Mary, enough. one MC is enough. Come on. <laughs>
out on the stage. Get the gang together and we'll have a mic rehearsal. Okay. And tell Don... Hey, chump. Me? Yeah, when did you get out of the army? What? Jack, wipe that mustard off your lapel. <laughs> I'll have it clean. See you later, Mary. Take back your samba. I, your rumba. I, your rumba. Hello, boss. Oh, hello, Rochester. What are you doing here? I gave you the day off. I know, boss, but I've got a date with my new girlfriend, and uh, I thought, uh, well, I thought maybe you'd let me use your car. Well, you got a new girl, huh? Well, of course, Rochester. Of course you can have my car to take her out. Gee, thanks, boss. And can I borrow that fancy gadget you use when you take your girl for a ride? Gadget? Yeah, that thing that makes you run out of gas when you reach Mulholland Drive. <laughs> Oh, that thing. No, no, it isn't dependable. Twice it stopped when I was driving Mary's mother to the station. <laughs> but Rochester, Rochester, tell me more about this new girl of yours. Huh? She's wonderful, boss. Just wonderful. Well, I never knew a girl could have such an effect on you. What does she look like, Rochester? You want me to describe her to you, boss? Yes. Yeah. Have you ever seen a California sunset... Just as Mother Nature extinguishes its last golden glow with the tranquil waters of the blue Pacific? Yes. Well, put a sweater on and you got it. <laughs> oh. oh, I see. Well, I better run along now. So long, boys. So long, Rochester. Have a good time, but be home by 10 o'clock. What? I said be home by 10. You want me to describe it to you again, boss? No, no. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, I can't remember. I can't remember Rochester being so crazy. Jack, everybody's here now. Oh, good. Oh, Phil. Just a minute, Jackson. My boys are limber enough. Well, they don't have to do it now. Pick up those dice and listen to me. <laughs> okay. Hey, fellas, put away the dice. Take the money off the bass drum and give Frankie his clothes back. <laughs> now, Phil, when you do... <laughs> It's your own fault, Frankie. You shouldn't play if you can't afford to lose. <laughs> you don't catch me gambling, unless it's a sure thing. Sure thing. You wouldn't bet on Life Boy against B.O. Plenty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a gag. Oh, Libby, what are you waiting for? Join the throne. Get your own show, kid. <laughs> Well, it wasn't that funny. Now, Don... Gee, I thought it was funny. Now, Don... Dennis, when I want your opinion, I'll ask for it. Now, Don... Yes, Jack? There's something I want to talk to you about. I thought it was most amusing. Dennis, quiet. Now, Don... Yes, Jack? When you start to do your commercial... I thought it was not only humorous, but sophisticated. <laughs> Dennis, I said when I want your opinion, I'll ask for it. Now, Don... He's mad because I'm alluring. <laughs> Dennis, that's silly. A man saying he's alluring. What's wrong with that, Jackson? The doctor said I was alluring to strawberries. That's allergic! <laughs> that kind of a gag I want you to do on your own show. <laughs> now, let's forget it. Don. Oh, yeah. I want to talk to you about the commercial. Oh, it's all fixed up, Jack. I've got the quartet right here. Oh, no, you don't. Now, listen, Don. I made up my mind we're not going to have commercials with that quartet anymore, and that settles it. But, Jack, I worked all week on it, and the one for today is sensational. You told me the same thing last week, and look what they did. L.S., L.S., M.F.P., la, 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 hee, hee, hee. <laughs> A fine commercial. You poor guys probably thought that was good. <laughs> that doesn't. Now, look, Don, I'm not going to keep paying $500 a week for this lousy quartet. Now, get them out of here. But, Jack, we worked so hard all week. This one is really high class. Please listen to I it. I don't want to hear it. Oh, Jack, give him another chance. I'm... Oh, all right. But this is the last time. All right, boys, get ready and give it all you got. Here we go. L.S. M.F.T. L.S. M.F.T. Lucky strike means fine tobacco. Yes, lucky strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. L-S-M-F-T L-S-M-F-T L-M-N-O-P 
Oh, Robert E. Lee. Robert E. Lee. M N O P Q. O P Lee. Q R S T U. O P Lee. Don, that's not what I want. Believe me. M F T. La 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 la. The smoke, the smoke for me. La la. That was a very good song, and you sang it well. When I want your opinion, I'll ask for it. (laughs) What? I guess that'll hold me. I hope so. Now, fellas, Edgar Bergen will be here pretty soon, so let's get on with the rehearsal. Say, Jackson, it must have been a lot of fun working with Bergen last week, huh? It was, Phil. I really envy that guy. I envy him, Jack. You're both big radio stars, and you're both very popular. I know, but look at the setup Bergen has. What a cast. No agent, no contracts, no salaries. Just a paint job once a year. <laughs> anyway, kids, when he comes, I wish you'd leave us alone. I want to talk a little business with him. What's the matter, Jackson? Didn't he mail it to you? It's not that, Phil. He's a nice guy, and I think Edgar Bergen is a great comedian. I like Fred Allen better than anybody. <laughs> If you could get it these days, I'd wash out your mouth with soap. <laughs> you know, Jack, well. I heard Fred's opening show, and he had a very clever idea. His guest stars were Lowell Thomas and H.B. Kaltenborn. I know, I know. He was also supposed to have Gabriel Heater, but thank goodness Heater had some ethics and turned him down. What do you mean, ethics? Mary, how could Gabriel Heater possibly go on a program that introduces Fred Allen and start off with, ah, yes, there's good news tonight? <laughs> Some good news. All I know is that if Alan keeps on... Come in. Hello, Jack. Hello, everybody. Well, Edgar, glad you dropped in. Uh, By the way, Jack, I brought Charlie along. I hope you don't mind. Of course not. I'm always glad to see the root of all evil. (laughs) 
Let's get out of here, Bergen. The guy's corny. <laughs> oh, no, please. <laughs> please. Look at him, kids. Isn't he cute? Yeah, look at that little dimple chin. And that turned-up nose. It's <laughs> little ears. Yeah. <laughs> Just look me over, folks. Don't finger the merchandise. <laughs> Charlie, that's no way to talk to these folks. They're very important people. What do you mean, important people? I don't even know who they are. Oh, I'm sorry, Charlie. I'm sorry. This is my cast. I'll introduce you to them. Yeah, do. Please, do, do, yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's, now, there's Don Wilson, my announcer. Uh, where? Right over there. Wow. <laughs> Hand me my harpoon. There's a whale off the starboard bow. <laughs> No, uh, Charlie, now, you must show more respect. After all, Mr. Wilson is highly regarded in radio circles. Well, I'm curious, Durgan. Is that his stomach, or is he taking home the family wash? No. <laughs> hey, that was a good one. Yeah. Jack, I wish you wouldn't encourage him. Oh, I'm sorry, Edgar. I'm sorry. Now, Charlie, this is my orchestra leader, Phil Harris. Not the Phil Harris. That's right, the one and only. Oh, gosh, Mr. Harris, I've always wanted to meet you. You have? Yeah. Take up for me, will ya? <laughs> not now, Phil. You'll peel the paint off his face. <laughs> you know, Charlie, Mr. Harris is not only a musician, he's also a singer. Uh, yes, I recall, yes. Ham hocks and turnip greens, you know me in New Orleans. That's what I got to tell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that must make Bing Crosby feel awfully insecure. Yeah. They must worry the South, too, a little, huh? Yeah. <laughs> hey, look, you lay off of me, bub, or I'll rub you and Mortimer Snurd together and start a fire. Yeah. Phil, don't be rude. And now, Charlie, I'd like you to meet someone I know you'll like very much, the singer of our show, Dennis Day. Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, McCarthy. Are you Irish? Oh, sure, and that I am. Ah, it's a pleasure to meet a man in whose veins flows the water of the Lake of Killarney. <laughs> And I'm from the old saw, too, I'll have you know. And I still have me father, shillelagh. Oh, Bergen, watch it. Your Swedish accent is showing up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm practically doing... Now, uh, Charlie, thing. Charlie, I've saved this next introduction for the last. I know you're interested in the ladies, so I'd like to present Mary Livingston. Hello, Charlie. Well, 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 well. Hubba, hubba, and bubaloo. <laughs> Uh, the rest of you peasants can leave now. Uh, I'm about to begin Operation McCarthy. <laughs> oh, Charlie, you're the cutest thing I ever saw. Oh, Mary. Mary. What a beautiful <laughs> name. Just perfect for such a beautiful girl. Oh, Charlie. You know, Mary, it isn't often one sees a girl as gorgeous as you are. Charlie. Your beautiful, soft, silky hair. Your deep brown eyes, your kissable lips. Charlie, now stop. You're embarrassing Miss Livingston. Let him talk. Let him talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Edgar, let him talk. I'm liable to learn something. Oh, uh, Mary. Yes, Charlie. Hey, come here, Mary. Come here. <laughs> let me put my arm around you. That's it. Give me your handkerchief, Bergen. My monocle's steamed up again. <laughs> Come here, Charlie. I'm going to give you a great big kiss. I'll be right there, baby. Charlie, now behave yourself. Let me loose, Bergen. After all, I'm not made of wood, you know. All right, all right. Gee, <laughs> I always thought that he was. Now, say, Jack, I've got to get back to my rehearsal. Hey, what was it you wanted to see me about? Well, Edgar, it's a business matter. I thought we'd talk about it in private. Yeah. Now, look, kid. All right, Jackson, we can take a hint. Yeah, let's all go out and get a cup of coffee. Well, Jack, what is it you want to talk about now? You know, Edgar, I've always admired you. <laughs> I watched your start in radio. Yeah. I watched you climb and become bigger and bigger and bigger. And each year, I was happy because of your success. Careful, Bergen. The last guy who started out like that sold you the bikini galoon. Galoon! <laughs> 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 All right, so Bergen ain't paying attention. <laughs> now look, Edgar. You're at the pinnacle of your career. One of the greatest stars in radio. But I have something that will make you even greater. And I'm not going to be selfish enough to keep it from you. Well, my goodness, what are you going to give me, Jack? My new quartet. <laughs> a 
quartet. Yes, and for only a thousand dollars a week. What? Seven fifty. No, 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 Jack, it's not the price. I, I'm just, uh, I, I'm sure they're worth a thousand. But wait a minute, you're not talking about the quartet you hired for your commercials, are you? Oh, uh, you've heard them? Yeah. Three hundred dollars. No, Jack. <laughs> No, I'm really not interested at all. But, Edgar, how can you pass up such an opportunity as this? Just think of it. $300 for the best quartet in Los Angeles. Virgin wouldn't pay $300 for Los Angeles. <laughs> I wouldn't sell it to him. Now, listen, Edgar, before you say no, definitely, you got to hear these boys once more. I want to show you what they can do with a commercial. No. Hey, Don, bring your boys in here a minute. Okay, come on in, fellas. Wait till you hear this up here. Well, no, what did you want, Jack? I want Edgar to hear what these boys can do with a commercial. Why, certainly. Just listen to this. Take it, boys. Oh, Chasen Sanborn. Drink, 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 drink. Ah, uh, Bergen, let's get out of here. 250. No, Jack, no. Bergen, take me so out of here. Good. <laughs> 200. No, Jack, no. 150. Come on, Bergen, let's go. I'm it's sorry, it's Jack, I'm sorry. It's all right. Okay. Come on, one, 100. 100. Oh, one. That's all right, all right. go on, go on. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, we're all asked to contribute to the community chess campaign for 1947. All over America, local community chess are now trying to raise their, their largest amount of money for the health and welfare of our people. By giving generously to your local community chess, you can be sure you're supporting the friendly, neighborly service which helps your community day after day and month after month. So please give your full support to a service that is most vital to the health and welfare of millions of Americans. Jack, we'll be back in just a minute. The first here is my good friend, L.A. Speedway. It takes fine tobacco to make a fine cigarette. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Take a tip from the independent tobacco experts. Men like Mr. Sidney M. Cutt, independent tobacco auctioneer of Oxford, North Carolina, who has been in tobacco for 25 years. He said, season after season, year after year, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy fine tobacco, good ripe prime leaf. Take it from me, that tobacco's really tobacco. I've smoked Lucky myself for 17 years. Year in, year out, at market after market, independent tobacco experts like Mr. Cutts can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And fine tobacco means real deep-down smoking enjoyment for you. L-S-M-F-T. 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 Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. The famous tobacco auctioneers heard on tonight's programmer, Mr. L.A. Speed Riggs of Goldsboro, North Carolina. <laughs> and Mr. F.E. Boone of Lexington, Kentucky. <laughs> American. Basil Risedale speaking for the cigarette that means fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. You know, Mary, I'm glad we walked to the studio because this time of evening, it's Nice walking home. Yes. You know, Mary, radio is a funny business. Sometimes you have a good joke on the end of the show and you run shorter time, so then they cut you off the air. You mean like it happened us on our opening show? Yeah. And now tonight, when we've got all the time in the world, we've got nothing funny to say. <laughs> well, that's life for you. Well, I guess there's nothing to do but walk. Well, this is NBC, National Broadcasting Company. KFI Los Angeles, Earl Z. Anthony Incorporated. The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. At 50, I'm not a bit of a man, I'm a man, I'm a man, I'm a little, 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 and out of a little 59, American. Quality of product is essential to continuing success. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. 
L-S-M-F-T. 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 Of course. You said it. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. In a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. For it takes fine tobacco to make a fine cigarette. And year after year, at auction after auction, the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And fine tobacco means real deep down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. The Lucky Strike program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, a few days ago, President Truman took the controls off meat, which, of course, included ham. And here he is, Jack Benny. (laughs) Thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, how could you possibly introduce me? A suave, dynamic, sophisticated comedian that way. Well, Jack, I thought it was good. Good. Think, Donzie, think. I mean, a little of you must be brain. You can't be all blubber. (laughs) Concentrate. Jack, I saw nothing wrong with the way Don introduced you. I thought it was timely. I know, but it was so Fred Allen-ish. I mean, he always starts out on a topical thing and then beats it to death. I'll show you what I mean. Go ahead, Mary. You be Portland. Oh, Jack. No, no, Mary. Go ahead. I'll show you what I mean. Okay. Oh, Mr. Allen! Mr. Allen! Well, Portman, gee whiz, what's new? I see by the papers that President Truman took the controls off meat. Yes, I know, Portland, and things certainly have happened fast. Controls were off meat on Monday, and on Tuesday, St. Louis slaughtered Boston. (laughs) (laughs) Papa says he hasn't seen so much meat. Be controlled since Mama split her girdle. <laughs> well, stop that to the wrong word. You I know, know. <laughs> you know. That. That's what I mean, Mary. And I don't want to. I don't want to catch anybody doing jokes like that on this program. You're right, Jackson. The meat shortage is a serious thing. You're not kidding. Yeah, if people can't get meat, they'll take all of the grain and then start making foolish things like bread, and then there'll be a liquor shortage. <laughs> Liquor? Yeah, that's the stuff that keeps you pickled in the middle with the ice bag on top. (laughs) Oh, oh, Harris, they ought to put a hole in your head so people could see what's going on in there. You've got a hole in your head. Just pull the cork out. (laughs) And cut out that silly stuff. Oh, leave him alone, Jack. I think he's cute. Well, I don't. I do. Well, I... (laughs) Dennis. Where did you come from? That's what I asked my mother, but she said my father will explain it to me. (laughs) Dennis, sit down. The state line ran right through the hospital. (laughs) I said, sit down. Oh, well, to each his own. And now, to each his own? What's that? I don't know. It gets laughs on other shows. Well, I don't want laughs on this one. It spoils the mood. And believe me, we just had five minutes of mood. We have not. The people out there laughed as hard as they could, just like it said on their tickets. (laughs) Anyway, that's radio for you. You say to each his own, and it gets a big laugh. See, I remember when I was in vaudeville, and things weren't that easy. See, I used to have to go out there with sock material. When I had the audience where I wanted them, I sang two hot choruses of my Mary Oldsmobile and killed them. I used to look pretty good in those goggles and dusters. I was the biggest hit in showbiz. Wait a minute, Jackson. How about Al Jolson? What was so wonderful about Jolson? He used to come out on the stage and go through his act down on one knee. Some trick. I did my act on one knee long before Jolson ever thought of it. He was singing. You were ducking. (laughs) 
was singing. I was ducking. He was singing. I was ducking. This is where to eat his own fits. <laughs> Mary, if you keep making cracks like that, you're not going to come to my house for dinner tonight, and you'll be the only one missing. What are we going to have, Jack? Well, we're... Oh, my goodness, I forgot to tell Rochester to dress the turkey and chill the wine. Hey, Jackson, are we going to have wine? Sauternly. <laughs> oh, Betty, stand still for a while. They'll probably want to take pictures. <laughs> oh, that was a good one. In my Mary Oldsmobile. What a car with my sweetheart. Mary! <laughs> I told you if you... Oh, yes, I was going to call Rochester. Operator. Operator. Say, Mabel, what is it, Gertrude? Mr. Benny's line is flashing. Oh, yeah, I wonder what little Beaver wants now. <laughs> I'll insert the plug and see. Hello? Uh, operator, will you please get me my home? Uh, just a minute, Mr. Benny, I'll try. Mabel... Have you been listening to Mr. Benny's program this season? Yeah, and as far as I'm concerned, South America can take him away. <laughs> Why, Mabel flaps at him. How can you say that? I think Jack Benny is wonderful. Well, look, Gertrude, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. That's why they have a horse of another color. <laughs> yeah. You want to like Jack Benny? That's your prerogative. Like him? I'm crazy about him. Every time he says hello again, I'm lousy with goose pimples. <laughs> Sometimes I don't smoothen out till Monday. <laughs> well, he just happens to affect you that way. Me, he doesn't send. Oh, maybe. <laughs> Mabel, you're just jealous because Mr. Benny went out with... Oh, gee, I promise not to tell. Oh, come on, Gertrude. I always tell you everything. Okay, you talked me into it. <laughs> this summer, I went out with Mr. Benny, and he made such love to me, I almost fainted. Why, Gertrude, gear shift. <laughs> no, honest, Mabel, it's the truth. He told me I had hair like spun silk, eyes like limpet pools, a complexion like rose petals, and ears like little seashells. Gee, what did he say about your teeth? Nothing. I would forget them on a night like that. <laughs> uh, I don't know, but every time you always... Operator. Operator. I'm sorry, but the phone at your house is busy. Oh, well, try it again later, will you? Come on, Dennis, let's have your song. <laughs>
is singing a song sung by Dennis Day, and very good, Dennis. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Very good, Dennis. Very good, Dennis. You always say the same thing. Why don't you tell me I'm terrible sometimes? <laughs> All right. All right, you were terrible. You're just mad because I sing good every week. <laughs> oh, be quiet, will you? What do you want? And now, ladies and gentlemen... <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, we really have a surprise for you. For our feature attraction tonight, we're going to do our version of that thrilling, spine-tingling mystery series, The Whistler. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Who are you? I am The Whistler. And I walk by night. I influence the lives of innocent people. And sometimes I even drive them to murder. Well, I'm certainly glad you dropped in because tonight you can help me with the sketch we're going to do. Jack? Jack, who are you talking to? That man. That man right there. What man? I don't see anybody. That man right there was whistling. Whistling? I didn't hear anybody, Jackson. Are you kids crazy? I'm telling you, there was a man standing right there at that microphone. Dennis, you saw him, didn't you? Yeah. He was a kind of a mysterious-looking fellow with a brown suit, penetrating eyes, and a scowl on his face. That's right, that's right. And what was he whistling? To each his own. <laughs> he was not. It was the Whistler's theme song. Oh, Jack, what's the matter with you? You didn't see anybody, and neither did Dennis. Well, I... Yeah, I, I thought I did. Maybe it's because I've got my mind all wrapped up in the play we're going to do. Now, Mary, in this... Excuse me a minute. Hello? Oh, Mr. Benny, I've been trying to get you home, but your line is still busy. Uh, thank you, Gertrude. Uh, keep trying, will you? I will. And, uh, uh, Mr. Benny. What is it, Gertrude? Say it for me, will you? <laughs> huh? You know, say it once more, please. Oh, I don't want to. Oh, come on, please. Just once. Oh, all right. Hello again. <laughs> Darn it, she fainted again. Oh, Gertrude, Gertrude, Gertrude. Uh, this is Mabel. Oh, did Gertrude hurt herself? No, luckily the goose pimples broke her fall. <laughs> good. Good. Gee, she faints all the time. This Christmas, I'll have to give her some smelling salts. Eh? Yeah, then you can stop carrying that water pistol. Yeah. Now, kids, in the play that we're going to do tonight, Mary... Oh, going... Jack, before you go into the play, we have to do the commercial. Oh, yes, yes, Don. I'm glad you reminded me. I have the quartet right here. Well, all right, but they're going to have to do what I wrote. No more of that silly stuff. As long as I have to pay them $500 a week, I'm going to write their stuff myself. Now, look, boys. <laughs> you're going to cut that out, too. Jack, I know you're the bus, but if you think you can write better than Nelsie Ash... Wait a minute, Nelsie Ash... ...music teacher, well, that's up to you. <laughs> Don, I'm the boss. You're the bus. <laughs> the bus. What'd you say, Don? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Well, I said, I said as long as you're the boss and you think it's that you can write as good as Nelson Eddy's music teacher, why, that's just up to you. Don, I don't care what... Wait a minute. Nelson Eddy's music teacher? Yes, he's been training the quartet all week, and Jack, you'll simply love what they've prepared. Well, if a music teacher... Well, that, that sounds a little better, Don. Now, we're getting someplace. Sit down, kids. This should be all right. Quiet, everybody. Go ahead, Don. Let's hear it. Okay, ready, fellas? Give me that introduction. Hmm. L.S. M.F.T. L.S. M.F.T. Lucky strike means fine tobacco. Yes, lucky strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Mammy's little happy love said, let's send this. 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 Happy love, 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 happy love
Thank goodness. Mammy says it's happy love. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don. 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 Don, I want to... Have, have you gone entirely crazy? I mean, is this what they've been practicing all week? But, Jack, that was shortening bread. I don't care if it was apple pan dowdy. Get those guys out of here. <laughs> now, I've had enough of this. Come on, fellas. Out. 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 And stay out. Mm. <laughs> what a broadcast. What a program. All I have is trouble, trouble, trouble. I'll bet it'll be just as bad on the repeat show, too. Oh, fine. <laughs> now, come on, kids. Let's, let's get on with the play. Take it, boys. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we now offer our version of that blood-curdling, thrilling murder mystery, The Whistler. influence the lives of innocent people. You don't believe me? Let me take you to the home of Mr. and Mrs. Park, Gwendolyn and Griffith. <laughs> As we look in on them, it is morning and they are having breakfast. They are happy, but not for long. <laughs> for I am the fit... <laughs> Gosh, Gwendolyn, this looks like a wonderful breakfast. Oh, I'm glad you like it, Griff, because I have a surprise for you. My mother's coming to live with us. Oh, bully, that's wonderful. <laughs> See, they're happy, but I'll change that. Gwendolyn, when is your dear darling mother coming? Tomorrow. I'm glad you told me in time. Now I can buy her a present. I wonder what I should give her. Why don't you give her a kick in the teeth? <laughs> No, Gwendolyn, your father gave her that last year uh, What did you say, dear? I just answered your question But I didn't say anything Oh, I thought you did <laughs> You see, I've got them confused already Well, I better finish my breakfast Yes, here's a great big bowl of cereal Wait, I'll pour the cream on it for you Take your fingers out of your ears now. They've stopped crackling. <laughs> now, eat your cereal. Okay. <laughs> Gee, that was a stubborn little one, wasn't it? <laughs> it certainly was, darling. Darling, darling. Come on, come on. Hit her with something. I've got other homes to break up. What did you say, Griffith? I didn't say anything. My mouth was full of the breakfast of champions. <laughs> Oh, yes, that's why you're so strong and powerful and masculine and... Stop looking around, I'm talking to you. Gee, thanks. Well, I better finish my breakfast and hurry to the office. Give me a couple of eggs, dear, and some bacon. About 12 slices of bacon. Yes, dear. (laughs) 
Yes, I am the fit. I know many strange things. I even know where they got the bacon. <laughs> <laughs> and now, Griffith is at his office, while his wife Gwen is at home waiting for her sweetheart, the Iceman. <laughs> and now look, look down the path. The Iceman cometh. Yes, the Iceman cometh. Won't you come up with me to Alabama? Let's go see my dear old... Uh, shut up! I'm <laughs> not on the door. She's waiting for you. Hello, baby. Hello, Kilroy. <laughs> <coughs> come in. Wait a minute. I got to get rid of this ice. Mm, just give me a kiss and I'll melt it for you. <laughs> come on. Gee, I wonder what your husband would say if he caught you kissing me, his best friend. Oh, I tell you, you're congratulating me on my birthday. But you've told him that 28 times this year. Ain't he getting wise? No, but he's getting mad buying me all those presents. <laughs> Gee, Kilroy, you and I could be so happy together if it wasn't for my husband. Ah, now you're on the right track. Well, go ahead. Why don't you kill your husband? Kilroy, I just got an idea. So did I. Let's, Let's kill, kill Griffith. Griffith. It must be love. We said it together. That's it. That's it. Now we're getting somewhere. Go ahead. Go ahead. Kill him. Gwendolyn, I know just how to kill your husband. We'll take him down to the Union Station and throw him under the wheels of a passing train. But at Union Station, all those people will see us. Oh, what? They'll think it's a stunt for truth or consequences. (laughs) Sure. You can get away with it. And you'll get a box of does besides. (laughs) No, no, Kilroy, I have a better way. When he comes home, you hide in the closet. When he hangs up his coat, you can strangle him. And no one will ever know. No one will ever know. Except me. (laughs) For I am the fiddler. Now it's evening. The office is closed. And Griffith, the unsuspecting husband, is walking home without a care on his mind. Gee, it'll be nice to get home to my loving wife, Gwendolyn. I feel sorry for her. She's alone all day. Are you sure she's alone? Yeah, of course. About twice a week, our best friend Kilroy drops in, but that's only on her birthday. (laughs) Her birthday? Yeah, I'm three, three presents behind this month already. What's the matter with me? I'm acting silly, talking to myself. Lots of men talk to themselves when their wives are in love with another man. And Kilroy was there. Oh, she can't be in love with Kilroy. After all, when we were married, he was our best man. Yes, and after the ceremony, your wife kissed him, remember? But all brides kiss the best man after the wedding. For three and a half hours? (laughs) (laughs) It was either that or take him on the honeymoon. (laughs) Gee, what's wrong with me? The way I keep talking to myself. Anyway, I know that my wife doesn't see Kilroy anymore. Oh, she doesn't, eh? Then hurry home. You'll find them together. All right. I'll go home and see for myself. Gee, I better be prepared. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. You see what I mean? Here are three innocent people, and I have planted the seeds of suspicion and hate, which will soon grow into murder. Ain't I a stinker? (laughs) Oh, well, to each his own. (laughs) Darling, you're home early. Step aside, woman. I'm going to search this house. Aha! Look on the carpet. Footprints. Big footprints made by size 12 shoes. Darling... Why didn't you tell me? Your mother is here. Her mother isn't here, you little fool. Those are Kilroy's footprints. Her mother wears size 14. Now, don't waste time. Ask her about Kilroy. Go on, ask her about Kilroy. Huh? Oh, yes. 
Darling, was Joe here? Not Joe. That was yesterday. <laughs> it's Tilroy's day. And Wednesday is Bing's day. Now, come on, Griffith. Come on. You've got to get murdered. Go on. Go on. Open that closet door. No, no. I don't want to. I'm afraid. Come on. Don't waste time. Open that closet door. No, no. All right, then. I'll open it for you. Now, sit tight, folks. This is going to be gruesome. All right, Griffith. Prepare to meet your doom. I'm going to open that door now. Oh, darn it, I've opened the wrong door. Ladies and gentlemen, the chief hope of our enemies during the war was to divide the United States along racial and religious lines and thereby conquer us. Let's not spread prejudice any more than uh, we would have spread enemy rumors during the recent conflict. Through our behavior, we encourage the respect of our children and make them better neighbors to all races and religions. Remind them that being good neighbors has helped make our country great and kept her free. Thank you. The name of our quartet is the Sportsman. Our telephone operators are played by Sarah Berner and B. Benadero. Jack will be back in just a minute, but first here is my good friend, Mr. F.E. Boone. American. In a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Mr. Harry R. King, independent tobacco buyer of Durham, North Carolina, has been in the tobacco business for 21 years, he said. At auction after auction, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy real fine tobacco, the kind of tobacco that smokes up smooth and mild. Yes, for a real smoke, I picked Lucky's. Smoked them myself for 18 years. Quote, at auction after auction, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy real fine tobacco, unquote. Season after season, independent tobacco experts like Mr. King can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. And this fine, light, naturally mild Lucky Strike tobacco means real deep-down smoking enjoyment for you. L-S-M-F-T. 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 Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. The famous tobacco auctioneers heard on tonight's programmer, Mr. F.E. Boone of Lexington, Kentucky. Red 59, 59, American. And Mr. L.A. Speed Riggs of Goldsboro, North Carolina. Billy 57, American. Basil Risedale speaking for Lucky Strike, the cigarette of fine tobacco. I am the fit. No hands. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.